Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church. A blessed All Saints Sunday to you all. Today, as we give thanks for all the saints, we celebrate God's promise that in Christ all things are made new as we continue to live into each day the promises of our baptisms that we are being recreated in God's image each day. A warm welcome to any visitors who are worshiping with us this morning. Your presence among us is a blessing to us. Stewardship season continues, and if you uh, haven't turned one in and, and would like to fill out a pledge card, they are available out at the reception desk in the gathering place. Uh, St. Mark's men's group will be gathering this coming Saturday, November 9th, at uh, 9 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Um, please put that on your calendar um, if, and uh, please join the men's group. I believe they'll be planning uh, the upcoming events for uh, 2025. Um, uh, Tom and Judy and Roxy Tolbert will be out in the gathering place after the service to continue uh, taking photographs uh, to update our online church directory. Um, if you haven't had your photo taken um, and would like to be included in that online directory, pl please see the Tolberts out in the gathering place after worship. Um, I understand that uh, our internet is not working properly, uh, shaky as it were, and so if you're watching online and uh, the, the video feed seems a bit uh, uneven, that's probably what's going on. We're endeavoring to, to uh, how can I say it, stream the, ser the service as as best as we can this morning. Thank you for your patience. Uh, we've come to worship our Lord. Uh, let us quiet our hearts now as we prepare for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, our refuge, our delight, our beginning and our end. Amen. Remembering the waters of holy baptism, let us come in truth before the one who loves us and has freed us from our sin. Eternal One, robed in majesty and mercy, we confess that sin has taken hold of us and we are complicit in its power. We are disturbed in spirit and our hearts cannot rest. Unbind us and set us free. Lead us again to the waters of rebirth that we may live just and generous lives for the good of your world and the care of our neighbors, following the servant way of Jesus. Amen. These words are tr trustworthy and true. Christ bore our sins once for all on the cross swallowing up death forever. For his sake, you are forgiven, and God remembers your sin no more. Let your heart be glad again and rejoice in your salvation. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship, worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, 
comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the 25th chapter of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Receive a blessing from the God. 
has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. They shall receive a blessing from the God of their salvation. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? And who may stand in God's holy place? Those of innocent hands and purity of heart who do not swear on God's being, nor do they pledge by what is false. They, re they shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek you, O Lord, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. They shall receive a blessing from the God of their salvation. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle? Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? Truly the Lord of hosts is the King of glory. The second reading is from the 21st chapter of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is coming among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all these things new. And he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, 
Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, there is already a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. Today on All Saints Sunday, we remember Revelation's promise that we heard read just a moment ago. See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. In the last book of the New Testament, John the Revelator writes with a forward-looking hope, confident in the promise that Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, is always making all things new. Today we remember all the saints throughout history who have witnessed to the magnificent hope of eternal life in Jesus Christ. We also remember that we are the living saints whose faith is built upon that great cloud of witnesses who have passed on the faith to us so that we might pass on our faith to a new generation of saints. Like the saints before us, we also long for a new heaven and a new earth. We long for something in this life that death cannot touch. Throughout the centuries, the saints have lived like us, hoping in Christ. Like us, they have shed tears and struggled with life. And like the saints we remember today, we are also surrounded, like they were by death and mourning, crying and pain. We know that life is hard. And yet we also walk by faith with a hope for a new heaven and a new earth amid this world's, this earth's strife and brokenness. As long as death and mourning, crying and pain are with us, it always feels as if heaven and earth never quite reach one another. John's revelation beautifully captures that sense of our very finite and broken human reality and are at the same time our infinite human longing for unity with God and eternity. God's voice from the throne says, see, I am making all things new. God's voice offers us a hope that death cannot touch. See, I am making all things new is the promise that God is actively creating life out of death and hope out of sorrow. On All Saints Sunday, we remind ourselves of our Christian hope that we are saved by grace through faith and that all who believe in him, though they die, will live. 
The promise of God's grace was poured over each of us in holy baptism. Like the water described in Revelation, to the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. We thirst for eternity's waters. And over and over the waters of baptism have quenched our thirst amid the, bit, amid the wilderness and parched moments of life. 